All right, if you're frustrated with putting a lot of practice sessions in and just not getting any better, then I think we've got something here that you're really gonna wanna see. All right, so we're on the range today. Mike's gonna take some swings here in a minute. We're gonna go through an entire range session. And one thing you may have seen if you watched our channel before is this, the Rapsodo Mobile Launch Monitor. And it's a lot of fun, it's really cool. It gives you that shot tracer, it gives you your distances when you're on your range. But is it really, is it just for fun? Or can it actually help you become a better golfer? Well, one thing we're gonna dive into is a new feature for the Rapsodo called Insights. Mm -hmm. So today, we're gonna focus on three very important parts of every golfer's game. Okay. We're gonna look at dispersion, mm -hmm. you know, accuracy. We'll talk about that more in a second. We're gonna look at club gapping, mm. because those yes. gaps, you know, you leave yourself with gaps. It can be both a fitting thing, fit to the right, right. equipment, mm -hmm. but also your ability to fill those distance gaps. And then the last thing is, what all good golfers want people to do uh -oh. is shape their shots. Oh yeah, the old fades and draws. Exactly, and if you're one of those people who goes to the range, and like I said, you're just hitting the same shot over and over, in reality, are you improving? I don't think so. I don't think so either. You gotta practice for a purpose, man. That's right, and the best <laughs> golfers will get out there and they will work on their different shot shapes. So this is gonna force us to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this Rap Soto set up now. Okay. Mike's gonna run through a session. We're gonna hit what, four iron through, what do you wanna do? I think do? we'll do four through seven iron. Okay, so that way we can get our gapping. We'll get four through seven iron. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna dive into those insights, show you what this will tell us in that session. And then after that, we'll go back and we'll make you, you shot shape a little bit. Yeah, and guys, I'm gonna do it with driver. I'm gonna work on those draws. There you go. All right. All right, so let's get the Rap Soto show, set up and we'll show you what we mean. All right, so Mike's gonna start with the seven iron here. And one thing I wanna keep driving home and, and, and mentally compare and contrast this versus your normal range session. What we're gonna do here and what you're gonna see really quickly, how just adding something like this little device is gonna revolutionize that range session, mm -hmm. right? It's gonna add that focus and things like that. But what are you gonna do? You're gonna do eight shots with each one? Eight shots with each. So that's 32 shots total. And guys, for that improved accuracy, that's why we're gonna hit eight shots. However, I will tell you this, the Rapsoda Mobile Launch Monitor does need at least six shots with each club in order to gather enough data to give you some accurate feedback, which we're gonna show you in the device in a second. So just plan on hitting at least eight, uh, at least six shots, but remember the more shots you hit, the more data it has, the more numbers it can crunch, and the more it's gonna spit out back for you in that knowledge. So we're gonna do eight shots each. Here we go, Mike's got the seven iron, let's go. Right now, Mike has got the seven iron. He's got a target in mind. We have the Rapsodo measuring right down the line. It is lined up with that target, so we know we're getting an accurate dispersion numbers. It's gathering those as we go. And Mike also has a distance in mind that he wants to hit that club. So it's, again, it's not just going out there and just swinging and wherever it goes, it goes. He's simulating what you'd have almost on the golf course where you've got a target and a distance, and he's gonna use that with each club. All right, real quick, one thing I will mention, we're using range balls here, so the distance might be a little bit less. Obviously, with the Rap Soda, you can use range balls, you can use real balls, and if you haven't seen our other videos where we've talked a little bit about how the Rap Soda works, it's a combination of both the radar from the device that's measuring, as well as it's using the camera from your iOS device in order to register everything. But Mike, real quick, you've got your six iron right in hand. Yep. So, Two things, what, what's your aim point and uh, how far do you usually hit it? Like what's your target yardage with this? I'll pull this out anything between like 185, 192-ish. Uh, aim point, I'm gonna try to hit dead center in between that yellow and blue flag down there, which you guys might not be able to see. And then that's something that we're gonna see when we dive into the insights. How close is the reality of how far it's traveling to what Mike has in mind of how far he wants to hit that shot. All right, moving on to the five iron. Now, dispersion, you're gonna to start to see them like this, right? The, the four, the five iron, even the three iron, and down, you're gonna to start to see that's where dispersion starts to really get wide. And that's something I've been really working on, so I'm hoping these insights show that the five and the four iron are nice and tight. We won't know that until we're done with the session. Right, and that's what I was mentioning earlier about being a baseline, and once you know that, Mike can come back here and structure his next practice around those clubs that need the most work. Because again, let's be real, how many of us go down to the range with the club we hit best, it's our feel good shot, and we keep hitting it. But what's happening is you're neglecting those clubs that need work. 
So Mike's gonna see that in a second. And the other thing too I wanna note is how unobtrusive this is. That's another thing that I really like about it. The rap soda sitting there, it's doing its work. The only interaction that Mike has to do so that he can stay in his mindset of working through this session, he just goes back, he's just selecting his different clubs as he changes clubs. But other than that, it's back there. Mike can peek back at it if he wants to look at some of the distances he's currently hitting, but otherwise, it's just gathering the data, no, hands off, nothing that he needs to do to interact with it. Mike can just focus on hitting good shots. Right now, we're seeing every shot, a tracer, and then an overlay on the map so we can look really quick at how far on or offline that dispersion is. So it's, it's right here too, you get that instant feedback as well as the, the feedback on the data we're gonna get later. All right guys, moment of truth. So Mike just finished that mini session that we did. Right now what he's gonna do, he's gonna exit it and then we're gonna go in and there's gonna be a spot in the app where you can go to session insights. So we're gonna bring that up now and we're gonna take a look at what it has to tell us. See where we can, uh, like I said, improve and become yeah, better. Exactly, all right, yeah. let's dive in. Well, that's a lot of data. Yeah, and visual too. Yeah. We can see it on the map there. So so what does it tell us down there below? It says, this is one thing of my favorite parts of this is, is the key takeaway. All right, so the key takeaway. So for this session, your lateral dispersion was greater than your handicap range for seven iron, six iron, five iron, and four iron. So work on selecting a target and minimizing that lateral dispersion. Right, so they're saying left to right, and this is what's nice too, comparing you against people of a similar 10 handicap, mm -hmm. you're saying you're a little bit wider with these clubs. Yes. All right, and we can see it overlaid on the map. So what that tells us is that A, all of these clubs are something you can work on, but where's we see one huge dispersion circle there? Right, so now I could pick by clubs. So yeah. under a club analysis, uh, let's just start with the forearm because that's probably the wide one. I think that's the, the circle we're looking at. So let's see, as it's, it's loading up here. So here you go. It's pretty interesting, this little bar chart that you get. You get, um, first we'll go accuracy on it. Here's that circular chart. Read that real quick. So during the session, your carry dispersion for four iron was 112 yards and your lateral dispersion was 95 yar yards. <laughs> Work on your carry dispersion. That tells you a lot. It does. And think about it, that can be the difference in, in two strokes on a hole, right. being that far off with that club. So again, immediately answering the question of how is this device going to make you a better golfer? You know, I'm curious now to see the seven iron and see how much tighter. I mean, that's the one, you know, when we get up to the eight iron, nine iron wedges, right. we feel more confident. So. Let me do myself the service here and look at seven iron dispersion here on accuracy. And yeah, nice and tight, nice in that circle. During this session, your carry uh, dispersion was 36 yards and lateral was 47. So you see right, that. so a larger lateral left to right dispersion Much than shorter. distance. So you're getting your distance, but this is where you may be missing some greens. You're on your approach to seven iron left or right. So it's quickly telling you, this is how that would translate to the golf course. So again, so much more information here on the range and so much more feedback for you as a golfer than you might otherwise get if you're just out here just taking swings. All right, so that's dispersion. The next thing I wanna show you real quick from that same session is gapping. Now here's probably the aha moment for me. Look at the four iron. It actually averages 190. And I had a couple of good ones. You could see my high was 222 with it, but that was just one shot. My average is the same as six iron. Makes me think, should I be looking at a four hybrid? Now I had a duff shot in there at 144, but these do happen out on the course. So it does happen. Maybe, and that also tells me, maybe I'm not hitting the four iron right. Maybe right. it's not right for me. Interestingly enough, you've got three clubs all going the same distance on average. So you're leaving something on the field there, whether that be working with those clubs to hit them properly and get the right distance out of them mm -hmm. and take those outliers out or maybe it's working with something in equipment wise that can do that but if you've got three clubs in the bag taking up that are all hitting the same distance you know there's a red flag something's wrong this is what we got to work on there you go so now let's pull out the driver if you guys watch often you know one big thing that mike's been working on is getting away from that what do we want to call it? You want to call it a push fade? You want to call it a slice? Power fade. Power fade? We'll let's, call it, let's call it power. <laughs> but recently, Mike's done some work with a couple coaches and he's starting to draw the ball. But the question is, can it be done on demand? The best golfers can shot shape on demand. So what we're going to do yeah. is five shots uh, uh, each way for the okay. driver. So 10 total to drivers. Try to hit five fades, try to hit five draws. Let's try to hit five fades, five draws. We'll let Rapsodo do all of the heavy lifting of measuring everything. It'll measure the direction and the shot shape. Mm -hmm. And then we'll dive into the insights and see what it has to say. Yeah, that sounds good. And I could see from my iron session I just did that I'm naturally a fader of the ball. 
about 50% of those shots you just saw were fades. Were fades. Right, so that's your natural shot shape. Again, giving you that insight for you as a golfer. Yep. But let's see if you can shot shape on demand. Okay. All right, so Mike's got driver. Which one are you gonna start with? Let's fades, draws, with you wanna alternate them? What do you wanna do? Let's just do fades, because it's natural swing. I'll just hit five normal drives. Okay, so that's Mike's normal shot shape. He's gonna try to put five fades out there. Okay, bit of a fade there. Ah, oh, a little bit of a hook draw there. Now that one was not intentional. There's a bit of a nice fade. Now, obviously when we dive into the insights, what we want to see on these 10 shots is a 50-50 of fade and draw. We're gonna see if it skews one way or the other. Now the challenge for Mike. Now the big challenge. The challenge. This is not his natural shot shape, but again, you're gonna get faced with certain situations out there where you need to do something that is not your natural shot shape. Mike is gonna try to hit five draws. Straighter. And there's a bit of an overcompensation. Probably, probably gonna register the, the hook. Yep. Trying to turn it. It's turning left. It's turning left, but it's it's a little bit more of a hook than a, than a draw. Let's and we'll see if if the Rapsodo picks up that nuance, hook versus draw. Oh, that's a nice, pretty draw right there. Down the middle, tons of distance. That thing's going in the woods. Yep, it's in the woods. One important thing too I want to mention when we're talking about all this data storing and the insights, all of that comes with the premium subscription for the Rapsodo, which I think comes in at around $100 a year. Uh, what we will do too is we'll put a coupon code uh, in the video description. You can use Golficity, get a very good discount on the Rapsodo. So thank you to Rapsodo for offering that up for all of our viewers. Make sure you use that coupon code so you can get the discount. But again, if you already have the device, make sure you're updated so that you get the insights and make sure that you do have that premium. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna narrow it down to just driver here. And again, we're, what we're targeting would be a 50% fade, 50% draw, but let's talk about reality for a second. You knew you were gonna fade the ball more than you drew it, that's your natural shot shape, what'd you get? All right, so I have about, as you can see, 38% of the shots, or almost about four of, that, four of those drives or so, were fades. 20% uh, Which is right because you were able to fade on demand pretty on demand, quickly. Really right, easy. So that was right. the highest one and I knew that was going to be the case. 20% of them they considered them slices and that was accurate. I, there was a couple of them that did go far right. Then you could see you know I've had about you know almost 15% were hook and about 10% were draw and then about 20% were straight. Majority of my shots were either straight or a fade. So I guess that helps me lining up over a drive. Yeah. If there's water left, that's confidence. I know where my shot's gonna go. Or on the flip side of that, if I want to incorporate more draws into my game, now I know what I got to And work. let's talk one more time about how this makes you a better golfer. It's the benchmarking. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is now today's benchmark. You know, what? how many percent of time did you draw the ball? I drew the ball about 10%. Uh, right, so now let's say you go work with your coach or work with your, you know, just on your own. Just working on hitting draw. You could do a draw session, right? Now you know next time you run through this again, you look at your session insights, maybe it's 20%, and then it's 30%. Right. You know that you're becoming a better golfer. And as you can see, we just scratching the surface. We didn't even talk about Smash Factor and all the other insights they have in there. We just narrowed it down to those three. Right. There is a wealth of insights that are in there. But again, I want to drive home the most important takeaway here is just understanding that if you're going to put the work in on the range, if you're going to put the money in, you're going to buy a bucket of balls to go out there and hit, make sure you're doing it with a purpose. That is that mm -hmm. line towards improvement. That is where you start to become a better golfer. You're no longer just out here beating balls and this is what the best golfers are doing. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you have any questions, post the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.